Check this out. When I click the button, we should get a value update and we get a list of 20,000 numbers. Notice how we waited and then the button and the list updated all at once. But why should the button have to wait on the list to update? There's a new hook in React 18 that solves this problem. Let's check it out. Hello and welcome. I'm Dave. Today we're going to look at the new React 18 hooks use transition and use deferred value. I'll provide links to example source code and all resources in the description below. Our starter code today, we're starting in the package JSON. I just want to highlight that we are using React 18 and you would create your project with npx create-react-app and of course then name your project after that. And it should now come with React 18. Likewise, it should now have the new changes that go into the index.js and you can look in my repository linked in the description just to make sure if you're not sure that you have the same index.js changes that come with React 18. Okay, moving on from there, we've got the app.js and I've cleared out what normally comes with it as well as clearing out some of the files we typically don't use over here in the file tree. But what I do have is an example component, example one. I've got a couple of examples we're going to look at today. We're just pulling in the first one. And that first example is what we saw in the intro of the video. So let's go over this quickly. We're bringing in use state at the top and we're setting a couple of states, a count that is set to zero with count and set count and an item state that is an empty array with items and set items. Then we have a handle click function. I'll press control B to hide the file tree so we can see this even better. And in the handle click function, when we click on the button that we see on the page, we set the count to count plus one. And then we create an array. And this array will have 20,000 elements in it. And each one is essentially the number one at first using this dot fill with one, but then we map over it and then we actually create an array that has the count plus 20,000, so 20,001 and so on, but then we're removing the index, or I should say subtracting that index number. So it actually makes it count down from 20,000 all the way to one. And then we set that array for the items instead of this empty array that we start out with. So that's our handle click function. Now let's look at the content we create and return the content in the JSX. So this content is a div and inside is the button and an unordered list. The button has the handle click event and it displays the count state. And then the unordered list just maps through that array that was set for items where we set items to my array and it maps through those and lists them out. So it counts down from 20,000 all the way to one. Now, if we pull this over and look at our page, I'll go ahead and refresh. And if I click on the button, we have to wait. And then we get all of the updates all at once. The count state updates on the button at the same time that we see the list. But now with the new use transition hook in React 18, where React 18 is really emphasizing concurrency, this helps us do kind of two things at once. Essentially, it makes our React app still function while we're waiting on something else to complete. Before, it would batch these states and the state update for set count and for set items, and we just had to wait on both. But now with use transition, we can actually say one is urgent and one is not so urgent. So let's put in use transition. There it is. And after we do that, we need to go ahead and define use transition. So we'll say const, and then we have is pending, which is a state that we get back from use transition, as well as a start transition, or I can spell it correctly, start transition function. And this equals use transition. There we go. Now that we have used transition, we need to put it into place. Well, our urgent update is the count. We don't want to wait. And that's what happens. That's a, a click event. And we actually launch with the click event, this whole handle click function. But we're saying this state update is urgent. But then this one, actually this one here, is going to be a transition update. But let's start our transition up here, and then we can also create that array inside, which actually takes some time. So we'll say start transition, and then we have a function, 
And now we can put all of this inside the function. So I'll just highlight both, Control X to cut, and then Control V to paste. We've got both of these. Now this is a transition update where the other was an urgent update. So I should put the word update there as well. And React will differentiate between the two. So now I can go ahead and remove that space there. But we will see a difference based on that. But let's go ahead and use the is pending state that we get back as well. I'm going to scroll down and really just underneath the button is where I'll put this. And we can say is pending. And if is pending is true, let's go ahead and display a loading paragraph, just something to let us know that the information is loading. And if it's not true, we'll just go with null and not display anything. So that gives us a little bit of a status to know when something's pending and then when it's actually completed. So now let's see if this responds a little differently than what we previously had. Now I'll click the button and now we're loading. We instantly got one on the button and then we have our list of 20,000 numbers. So that is a big, big difference. We didn't have to wait at all. Let me refresh so we see the exact same thing again. We're going to click loading. We have number one here already, and now we have our list. And it's worth noting that this could be abused. You don't want to use it all the time because it causes two renders. And before we would just render one time, which is ideal. However, when you have something large, uh, something you're processing, something that's really going to make the app sluggish and you wouldn't see your other updates, that's when you want to use it. So we saw our update on the button right away now, but we saw our list then after that not so urgent transition update completed. Okay, now let's compare and contrast with use deferred value. I'm going to scroll back up to the top and we need to import it as well. So right after our use transition, I'll say use deferred value. And now that we've imported it, we can use it right away. So let's just say const and we'll call this the deferred count. Let's set this equal to use deferred value, or longer name there, and let's just pass in the count state. So now we're setting our deferred count to the use deferred value with the count state. And then just underneath where we had our is pending check for loading or not displaying anything, let's go ahead and display that deferred count. So we'll label it, we'll say deferred, and then we'll just put in our I think there's just one F there to start out. Deferred count, there we go. And then of course we close the paragraph out and we'll save. And now let's look at our application once again and notice when deferred updates. So we click number one loading deferred is still zero and then deferred updated when our list of numbers updated. So deferred is also not an urgent update. It just updates when it gets the chance and it lets all of the urgent updates happen first. So if we're calculating something that also takes a while, this would be a good time to use that deferred value. So we're displaying the previous value and then it just kind of updates after all of the urgent updates take place. So now we've looked at examples of how these new hooks work, but what about practical usage? I mean, it's hard to sometimes figure out when to use these different hooks, and especially these new ones. It's a, it's a little different. So let's go ahead and look at a practical use of them. We'll look at example two, and then of course I'll need to change that out in the app.js. But here I'm bringing in use deferred value again, also use transition, use state, and use effect. Notice I'm now creating a big array, as it's named, with 20,000 elements right here at the beginning, and then I'm pulling the keys out. So essentially it's counting one to 20,000 inside of the array because we've spread those out. Okay, inside of our example two component, we've got an input value state, we have a list state that starts out with the big array inside of it, We've also got is pending and start transition once again. And now we've got a deferred input, which is that input value. So very similar to what we saw the deferred count is now just whatever's typed in the input. Notice our handle input. It is much smaller than the previous handle function we looked at. This is just setting the input value to that target value, so a controlled input. But then we have a use effect. And inside the use effect, 
we have a start transition and inside the start transition we're going to go ahead and log this deferred input and notice the deferred input is also in the dependency array of the use effect so this use effect is only going to get called when the deferred input value changes and remember it won't change as fast as we change the normal input value state because it waits to let those urgent updates happen and we'll see this in the console as we log this out then we're using this to create a filtered variable and we're filtering that big array and we're using the deferred input so whatever's typed into the input is going to filter our big array but it's going to use the deferred value so it won't filter it right away and this is to simulate basically an API call even though we're doing a search filter in this example it's the same thing we don't have to filter as many times as we type in and that makes use deferred value kind of a use to bounce if you will or a to bounce function now we can't put in a specific amount of time like we would with a to bounce function or a use to bounce hook and that is a custom hook if we were to create one if you're not familiar with the to bounce function i do have a video about that on my channel but what it does is it lets us input in maybe enter several characters really because those are all urgent updates to our set input value that's considered an urgent update and then the deferred input will really only have a value after we've completed those urgent updates so it's not going to filter on every character we type in and that's kind of handy it's more efficient and then we'll actually see that result so here in the JSX well this is the content we're creating and we will display it down here inside of the JSX along with the input but in the content we're creating we're going to display that what we're searching for or if deferred input doesn't have a value we're going to just display all we'll be searching for everything also we're going to use this is pending to change the opacity of our display so we'll notice it get a little more transparent when we're actually pending and waiting on an answer or when we're in this loading state that we're also going to display with is pending and then once again we just map through the array that we eventually have that is set here with the filter okay so that explains the full component let me save this and I'll jump over to our app.js in our app.js we should just highlight all of the examples and then change example 1 to example 2 and save now let's come back and look at our application now we have a big input I'm going to refresh everything oh it says searching for all so that's correct let me bring this over so we can just see it better because we have a rather large input and we're searching for all that means that deferred input has no value so it's currently displaying all instead and then we see our list of numbers I'm actually going to make this a little smaller because I had it zoomed in let's go back to our 125% uh, looks good so we can see at least 10 numbers now I'll start typing and I'll type one two three and then everything came up fairly quickly not too bad but we can tell when it's searching and when it's not let's go actually one two three and it said searching for one two three now let's look at the console and see what we see over here notice we didn't see we were just searching for one or two it waited till we had one two three but as I back out notice our list is a lot smaller than 20,000 numbers now it's filtered down to a smaller number so when I hit the backspace it will probably search for each number because it completes those urgent updates much faster yes so we searched for 123 is where we were but then it searched for 12 and 1 and then nothing which means it's searching for all and it displays all of the numbers but if I type quickly here and just put in 222 it didn't search for 2 and 22 first it used that deferred value or essentially didn't update the deferred value and the first number it searched for was 222 so once again now I'm not filtering nearly as many numbers once we get up here so it's really going to search for each one on the way back down and eventually as you notice with the first digit it takes the longest so we see that opacity the second digit doesn't take too long the third even less the fourth even less and now we're down to just two numbers here so 
nothing is found once we get to five. But we can see as we get down to the smaller digits, the loading, the transition takes just a little bit longer. But we can skip over searching for some of those numbers right at the beginning. We just searched for 444, for example. So that is actually using the transition and the deferred value all in one in an example. And it's showing how we can keep our application responsive. The input field isn't really that laggy, except maybe just a little on the first digit, but not too laggy as we search for these other numbers. And it keeps everything interactive and yet we don't have to wait for the input to update based on a huge list rendering at the same time. I hope overall this has helped you understand use transition and use deferred value and how they can even be used together. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection and a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you and thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day and let's write more code together very soon.